The Shining Dragon and the Naked Child. Descending in the glory of the seas, he laughed as is his wont and answered me in riddling triplets of old time and said, Rain, rain and sun, a rainbow in the sky. A young man will be wiser by and by. An old man's wit may wander ere he die. Rain, rain and sun, a rainbow on the lea. And truth is this to me, and that to thee. And truth, our clothed, our naked, let it be. Rain, sun, and rain. And the free blossom blows. Sun, rain, and sun. And where is he who knows? From the, green, the great depth to the great deep. From the great deep to the great deep he goes. So Merlin, riddling, angered me. But thou fear not to give this king thy only child. Guinevere, so great bards of him will sing. Hereafter, in dark sayings from of old, ranging and ringing through the minds of men and echoed by old folk beside their fires for comfort after their wage work is done, speak of the king and Merlin in our time. Hath spoken also not in jest and sworn, though men may wound him, that he will not die, but pass again to come, and then or now utterly smite the heathen underfoot, till these and all men hail him for their king. Now, historically, all these people, the Christians would have used those pagan, heathen, you know, Gentile sort of insults against them, but let's not act like they're real terms for religious difference. She spake, and King Leodogran rejoiced, but musing, shall I answer gay or nay? Doubted and drowsed, nodded and slept, and saw, dreaming a slope of land that ever grew, field after field, up to a height, the peak haze hidden, and thereon, a phantom king, now looming and now lost. And on the slope, the sword rose. The hind fell. The herd was driven. Fire glimpsed in all the land from roof and rick. In drifts of smoke for a rolling wind. Streamed the peak and mingled with the haze and made it thicker while the phantom king sent out at times a voice, and here or there stood one who pointed toward the voice. The rest slew on and burnt, crying, No, king of ours, no, son of Uther, and no, king of ours. Yeah, they're still pulling that garbage. No, president. You know, uh, obviously the president. Um, Till with the wink his dream was changed, the haze descended, and the solid earth became as nothing but the king stood out in heaven. Crowned, and Leodogran awoke and sent. Ophius and Brastias and Bedivere back to the court of Arthur, saying, Yea. Then Arthur charged his warrior whom he loved and honored most, Sir Lancelot, Sir Lancelot to ride forth and bring the queen, and watched him from the gates. And I, uh, and Lancelot, passed away among the flowers. For then was later April, and returned among the flowers in May, with Guinevere, to whom arrived by Dubric, the high saint, chief of the church in Bretagne. And before the stateliest of our altar shrines, the king that morning was married, while in stainless white, the fair beginners of a nobler time, and glorying in their vows and him, his knight stood around him, and rejoicing in his joy, far shone the fields of May. Through open doors, the sacred altar blossomed white with May, 
the son of May descended on their king. They gaze on all the earth's beauty in their queen, rolled incense, and there passed along the hymns, a voice as of the waters, while the two swear at the shrine of Christ, a deathless love. And Arthur said, Behold, thy doom is mine. Let chance what will, I love thee to the death. To whom the queen replied with drooping eyes, King, my lord, I love thee to the death. Marriage, for example, was originally only a word meant for such intentions that you plan to be with him the rest of one's life. And holy Dubrick spread his hands and spake, Reign ye and live and love and make the world other and may thy queen be one with thee, and all this order of thy table round fulfill the boundless purpose of their king. So Dubric said, but when they left the shrine, great lords from Rome before the portal stood, in scornful stillness, gazing as they passed. Then, while they paced a city all on fire, with sun and cloth of gold the trumpets blew, and Arthur's knighthood sang before the king, Below trumpet, for the world is white with May. Below trumpet, the long night hath rolled away. Blow through the living world, let the king reign. Shall Rome, our heathen, rule in Arthur's realm? Flash brand and lance, fall battle axe upon helm. Fall battle axe and flash brand, let the king reign. Strike for the king and live. His knights have heard that God hath told the king a secret word, fall battle axe and flash brand, let the king reign. How many traditions have that secret word thing going on? Blow trumpet, he will lift us from the dust. Blow trumpet, live the strength and die the lust. Cling battle axe and clash brand, let the king reign. Well, don't they have lust for battle and apparently music um strike for the king and die and if thou diest the king is king and ever wills the highest clang battle axe and clash brand let the king reign blow for our son is mighty in his may blow for our son is mightier than the day cling battle axe and clash brand let the king reign you know son with a u the king will follow christ and we the king and whom High God hath breathed the secret thing. Fall battle axe and flash brand. Let the king reign. Now, there's got to be a cause, right? There's got to be a cause in that. Uh, doesn't the Bible say that Jesus is followers? If you're going to be a follower of Jesus, you don't fight for your country. Bastilia. I mean, kingdom, country, whatever. It's the same thing. Let's, let's not pretend. Um... So, sang the knighthood, moving to their hall. There at the banquet, those great lords from Rome, the slowly fading mistress of the world, strode in and claimed their tribute as of yore. But Arthur spake, Behold, for these have sworn to wage my wars and worship me, their king. You know, worship is in respect. The old order changeth, yielding place to new. And we that fight for our fair father Christ, seeing that ye be grown too weak and old and to drive the heathen from your Roman wall, no tribute will we pay. So those great lords drew back in wrath, and Arthur strove with Rome. Now, where does Jesus say that he was anyone's father in the Bible? And where does it say that he's unique in being a son of God, as I've shown in my spring equinox? Uh, well, I've given in my explanation verses that show that the whole Son of God thing is not quite so literal. And it's something you can become in a way, you know, it's, it was a phrase with multiple meanings other than just Son of God. And Arthur and his knighthood for a space were all one will. And through that strength, the king drew in the petty princedom. princedom under him, fought, and in twelve great battles overcame the heathen hordes 
and made a realm and reigned. And you also see in the conquering of Tibet, um, you see a symbolic thing number-wise going on.